Okay, our first presentation will be virtual. Um, Dave from Seattle, wake up super early. Um, so let's hear about this um, project. Okay, um, looks I can see my slides. Um, I'm gonna assume everyone can hear me unless I hear otherwise. Um, so hi, I'm Dave Wadden. I'm a grad student at the University of Washington and I'm excited to present our work on entity-centric query refinement. Um, this is joint work with my co-authors Nikita Gupta, Kenton Lee, and Christina Tutanova. Um, so as motivation, we'll start with a hypothetical user who has entered a uh, query for pre-trained NLP models into a search engine. Um, and we'll imagine that this user isn't an NLP expert. Um, maybe they're a software engineer interested in building a sentence classifier for a web app. So what system output would be most helpful to this user? To answer this, we can start by making an observation about the query. It's an example of what I'll call an entity-centric query, which is a query whose answer is a list of entities. Uh, for this type of query, one output that we could show the user would be a list of every entity answering the query. Um, so this list would have models like BERT, GPT-3, BART, etc. Um, and showing this list would technically be correct, but it's also unlikely to be useful. There are too many answers for the user to make sense of, and there's no organization or guidance indicating which entities might be the most relevant. So instead, we propose to show the user a small collection of query refinements. For instance, encoder models, causal language models, seek-to-seek -seek models, and word embeddings. And this output enjoys two advantages. First, the refinements serve to organize the answer space for users who aren't familiar with pre-trained NLP models. Um, so here I'm showing the answer space, um, and we can see that some of the models are encoder models, some are causal language models, some are seek-to-seek, -seek, and GloVe is a word embedding model. And in addition, Query refinements can facilitate exploration and discovery of relevant entities. And I'll illustrate this with a hypothetical user interaction. So to begin, the user enters a search for pre-trained NLP models, and the system returns a list of refinements. And then the user performs a follow-up search for encoder models. The search returns a web page indicating that encoders are good for sentence classification. And so now the user could ask for refinements to encoder models specifically and the system could categorize the, the encoder models by their size, models that run on a cell phone, a laptop, et cetera. And the user might decide that they'd like a model that can run on a laptop. So now the system can return a manageable list of entities and the user can choose a model for their application. The key property of these interactions is that they serve to progressively narrow down the answer space without the user having to reason over the full list of answers directly. So our goal in this work will be to generate high quality refinements for arbitrary entity centric queries. We'd like to build a model that can take a query like pre-trained NLP models and output four language model subcategories from our example, for instance. With this motivation in mind, uh, I'm going to present three main contributions. First, I'll define the entity centric query refinement task. Then I'll describe how we created a data set for this task without collecting human annotations. And finally, I'll describe how we use the data set to train a refinement generation model. So I'll start with the task. The task input is an entity-centric query, which is a query whose answer is a list of entities. So here we're showing the query together with its answers. The task output is a refinement set, which consists of k query refinements. So we'll use k equals 4. Um, and we're going to require that each refinement should itself be an entity-centric query, specifying a subtype of the input query. Um, so for example, the answers to the refinement encoder models are included among the answers to the input query. We'd like to generate refinement sets which satisfy three criteria. They should be comprehensive, interesting, and non-redundant. And I'll provide some examples. So this refinement set includes multilingual mass language models, causal language models with over 100 billion parameters, et cetera. The issue here is that most pre-trained NLP models don't fit into any of these categories. So there's lots of relevant entities that won't be discoverable. 
In other words, these refinements aren't comprehensive. Next, here's a refinement set that lists NLP models by year. Um, so this doesn't identify any important properties unique to NLP models, so it's not very interesting. In this example, seek-to-seek -seek models and encoder-decoder models are largely redundant, and similarly for causal language models and autoregressive models. Finally, here's our original example refinement set. This is comprehensive because it covers four common types of pre-trained NLP models. It's interesting because it organizes the answer space based on key modeling characteristics, and it's non-redundant. So this is the kind of thing we're, we're hoping to do. So now I've defined the task, and next I'll describe how we created a data set of training demonstrations. The high-level idea is that we're, in, we're going to use programmatic distance supervision to adapt an existing knowledge base to our task. And we're going to build on the Yago knowledge base, which uses the Wikipedia category system as its taxonomy. So here I'm showing the page for the Wikipedia category action films. And the key insight here is that the parent query or the parent category resembles a query, and the subcategories, things like action thriller films, look like potential refinements. So our goal is to create a refinement set for the query by selecting the K subqueries that best satisfy our evaluation criteria. And the way we do this is to reason over the answers to the subcategories. So to illustrate the thought process, we're going to take what I'll call an entity space view. The points here represent entities, movies. The blue box containing the points indicates the space of all action films. And all of the points inside this green box correspond to superhero films. So now we can ask, what would an ideal collection of refinements look like in entity space? One answer that we think is reasonable would look something like this. The refinements evenly partition the space of action movies such that each answer to the query answers exactly one refinement, and all refinements have the same number of answers. We think this is a good goal to aim for, since refinement sets that meet these requirements will be comprehensive and non-redundant. Now, in practice, we can't divide the entity space up however we want. The colored boxes need to correspond to subcategories that are available in our KB. And so our goal will be to choose the K subcategories that are closest to ideal. So here's an example of four subcategories that do a pretty good job of approximating an ideal partition. Um, and by contrast, here are four subcategories that are not very good at all. To select the K best subcategories, we propose a technique called query refinement via entity space partitioning, or QRESP, which works as follows. First, we define a scoring function measuring closeness to ideal. Um, so I'm going to skip the math, but the idea is that this refinement set is good and this one is bad. Then we optimize our scoring function by performing a combinatorial search over all set size K subsets of candidate refinements. And we make this tractable by converting the problem to an integer linear program, which we can optimize using general purpose solvers. So we ran this procedure on Yago Result, resulting in roughly 10,000 query refinement pairs. Um, so here's an example of the refinements chosen by QRESP for action films. And we can see that they cover four popular action film subgenres, things like action comedies and martial arts films. On the other hand, here are the results when we choose four random subcategories. Um, we see that they're overly specific, um, like the Purge films, or not particularly informative, like 1910s action films. So this provides some reassurance that our method is selecting high quality refinements. Now that we have a data set, we can use it to train a model. So for our model, we fine tuned T5 to take queries as input and output full QRES refinement sets as a sequence. And this gives us a seek to seek model that can generate refinements for any query we want, regardless of whether that category uh, exists in a knowledge base or not. So that's good, but of course, we still need to demonstrate that the data selection procedure we proposed here leads to a better model than we get if we just trained on random subcategories. So to do that, we train a separate model on random subcategories, make predictions for both models, and then ask annotators to compare the outputs. And we're going to do uh, to compare outputs for two different query distributions. 
First, we'll look at predictions on held out Yago queries, which can be thought of as in domain. And then we'll look at out of domain queries, which I selected from the natural questions data set, things like popular YouTube channels. Um, so I'll start with Yago. Here I'm showing predictions on a query for physicians. And we see that QRESP, the QRESP model generates a high quality refinement set indicating four common medical specialties. So this suggests that our model has learned to generate good refinements for queries it didn't see during training. Meanwhile, here are the refinements for models trained on random subcategories. We see that these refinements aren't comprehensive or interesting. Um, for instance, they mentioned dermatologists from two different countries. And we found that these observations um, held true more generally. So this plot shows the results of our evaluations on 100 held out Yago queries. The blue bar indicates the percentage of queries where the QMS model was preferred, green indicates random, and orange is neutral. And we see here that QRESP is more comprehensive for 75% of the queries. And we see the same trend for interestingness. There's less of a difference for non-redundancy, which again, agrees with the example here. Um, the random one isn't particularly redundant. Uh, and finally, QRESP is heavily preferred by annotators for overall quality. So these results show pretty strongly that our procedure for selecting training data leads to a better refinement model. Um, finally, we'll close by looking at some QRESP model predictions on out-of-domain queries. So here are model refinements for the query functions of government, and these look pretty good. They include important subcategories like education and defense. But there's still some room for improvement. Um, on this query for popular YouTube channels, we see that the model kind of repeats itself, mentioning three different versions of religious channels. Um, and the overall results comparing QRESP with random tell a similar story. Um, QRESP is still helpful, but not with the same consistency as in domain. So to summarize, we defined the entity-centric query refinement task. We proposed QRESP to create task demonstrations without collecting any human annotations. And we developed a general purpose query refinement model. We think we've made some good progress, um, but there's a lot of interesting open challenges here. Um, for instance, improving the consistency of our models under domain shift. Uh, so we have some ideas for how to do this, and I'm happy to chat offline. Uh, so with that, thank you all for listening, and I'm happy to take questions. Any questions from the audience? Hi, thanks for the interesting talk. Um, I was wondering, because you mentioned earlier that you could do this uh, hierarchically, right? You can have this splitting up and then do this multiple times in a sequence to get to drill down further and further. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I can imagine that this makes your query longer and longer. Um, yes. Is there a limit to how far, like, d d if you get a really long, if you perform this five or six times, is the query too long to then meaningfully split up? Does T5 handle this? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so in this, in this project, our kind of the scope we were looking at was just at looking at a single unit of a query and a set of refinements. Um, and I think the the idea would be that you actually don't need that many queries that you can kind of envision these queries as inducing like a, uh, or these refinements as inducing like a tree search over the entity space. And so, you know, in theory, the number kind of the depth you need to go to kind of scales logarithmic logarithmically with the total number of entities answering the original query. And so, um, you know, it's, you shouldn't need like more than three or four queries, hopefully to get a more reasonable list. And so I think the hope is that you wouldn't, have to do so many queries that you were getting longer, that you were getting yeah. like really long answers. Yeah. I, um, I was kind of going into the direction. Have you ever played 20 questions, the game? <laughs> yes. Yes. This was actually, let me, um, you know, I'm not going to go to the slide, but exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what we were thinking of with this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Any other questions? So, actually, I have one question. So, Say that you came up with, I think in the experiment, it was set to like five sub sub refined queries. 
if you mm -hmm. are like making, you know, say that you have like three queries and then you move to five queries or you have five and then move to seven or 10, like is it simply additions or do you think you have to like split up existing sub queries into two? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So one thing that we, we wanted to do um, but didn't get to would, it would be nice if one or two, one of two things happens. Either you could have the number of, of refinements as like a controllable parameter that the user could set. That would be one option. Um, so, you know, maybe you just want a very broad categorization into like two categories, or maybe you want more fine grained. Um, or the other thing is that maybe it would be cool if the model could kind of automatically identify the, the proper number of refinements based on the structure of the problem. So, you know, maybe for, NLP models like four is a really nice number because it captures this kind of these main types of, of um, NLP models. But maybe for, I don't know, computer vision, there's like five or six main different types of models and you would want the model to recognize that. Um, so we haven't done that, but we think that would be a really nice thing to explore in future work. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again and move on to the second talk. Thanks a lot.